Thanks everyone for coming uh, on on uh, Wednesday evening. If I'm not, yeah. Um, I the topic given to me was was really about uh, I need to talk about cloud and how, how do I blend cloud with with uh, big data uh, analytics. So uh, I came up with the the title uh, economics is driving uh, big data analytics to the cloud. Um, to level set, uh, um, to make sure that everyone has the same understanding, I, I'm going to go through what is uh, big data, what is analytics, and then um, you know uh, why a cloud is is a important platform for for this this uh, two technology. Uh, my my assumption is is most of, of you all already know or understand uh, a little bit about uh, cloud computing and why people are looking at, at cloud computing. <coughs> So Revolution, we, it's a U.S. company. I, I started their APAC operations uh, back in January 2012. So we've been in Singapore for about one and a half years now. Um, we are basically a software co uh, company that provides uh, advanced analytics software uh, to uh, customers all over the world. Uh, in Singapore, besides being an APAC uh, center, we uh, office, we also have a development center, uh, development team here. So. Uh, the team here is responsible for putting R, our software, into the cloud. So that's all done out of Singapore. Okay. Uh, just a quick snapshot of some of our customers. Um, we have lots of customers in finance and in and insurance. Uh, healthcare and life science is also uh, uh, quite a big uh, customer segment, uh, mainly because R, the technology, came out from the medical domain. Right, they were actually started by biostatisticians. Uh, in the region, we have customers in, 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 in uh, academia, in government, in uh, consumer info services is very, very interesting. We're just talking about what, what, what are people using big data for. A lot of our customers is actually in, in this space where loyalty cards information is being analyzed to understand the buying behavior of the customer. Okay. <coughs> Uh, Revolution is also uh, been working closely with IDA uh, on several fronts, uh, one of which is our center of excellence. Uh, the goal of this COE is really to partner with local industry players here to create new uh, IPs uh, in, in, um, uh, in the use of big data and, and analytics. Okay, so just come, come to us, let us know what you are looking at and if we think it's something that is uh, of value, uh, we'll just get the approval of, of IDA. We can start uh, co-developing the, the project. I mean, you will own the IP, right? For us, we are just going to help you to get uh, your product development done. <coughs> uh, the other piece is uh, center of attachment. With also with IDA, uh, this is really a three-month program to help companies build their own big data or, or what we call a data science team. Where if you want to start with data science and not sure what and how to go about it this is a program for you. Where whether you are a data scientist or you are uh, a statistician or if you are a uh, uh, IT person, you want to or have been tasked to lead and build a data science team, uh, this program will give you the foundation to do so. So what we'll cover is the, the basics of, of statistics, but more importantly also the infrastructure. You cannot do big data without understanding the infrastructure, right? and will tell you what people are using today. Right? It's going to be Hadoop, it's going to be big uh, high performance computing clusters. Those are the things that are driving the analytics uh, world today. So it's a three months program, classroom training, uh, hands on, uh, mentorship. End of three months you are supposed to deploy a uh, prototype or hopefully a production uh, model that will be useful to the organization. So to be accepted into the program, you need to come with a uh, problem statement from your company. It has to be company sponsored. It cannot be uh, individual. So that, let's take a step back and look at, at why all this uh, interest in, in big data analytics and therefore why uh, uh, I see, personally see, um, uh, where all this will head to is really a uh, cloud. Uh, today when you are looking at your uh, ERP systems, operational data are usually in gigabytes of uh, range. 
Um, so, uh, some of the bigger uh, companies will have uh, operating data in, 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 in terabytes, uh, but today people are collecting uh, system logs. People are collecting uh, vehicle uh, information. Uh, system logs will be very good for the, all the recent cases of uh, defacement. How do you detect uh, people are probing your, your, your infrastructure? to want to attack you at some point in time down the road. So people are now collecting all this information to study uh, what's happening in their network. So all this uh, uh, data goes up to petabytes of, of, of range. And what's interesting is this vehicle monitoring. <coughs> uh, not in Singapore yet, but I'm pretty sure sooner or later, manufacturers of cars are now working with um, uh, insurance companies to embed sensors in the car to detect your driving behavior and pattern. Not too far down the road, what will happen is your insurance premium could be based on your daily driving behavior and you could be priced or charged on a daily basis. So on that day you drive very badly, your insurance will go up. Okay, so it's, it's already possible. We already know of two companies that already have that. One is commercial, one is uh, consumer, uh, uh, you know, normal cars, but it's not launched yet. Okay, they are really looking at that. And when you want to collect all this vehicle information, sensor data, you're looking at uh, huge uh, uh, infrastructure to do that. <coughs> so you move further up is what we call the extra bike range. Uh, this is really, you know, you're looking at uh, real-time uh, telemetry, you're looking at 3D, 4D, um, seismic uh, data, uh, lots of machine sensors definitely, uh, lots of text, all right? everyone wants to know who is talking about what and how they are feeling on, on Twitter and Facebook. So a lot of those are in the exabyte range. Uh, and this is where traditional databases break down. Right? Traditional databases cannot store this sort of, of, of data. They can, it's very expensive, it does not make sense. Today there are better technology that allows you to store this large amount of data uh, very cost effectively. So what are people uh, are, are doing or looking at doing uh, with, with um, uh, big data? Uh, I think that, that screen is probably slightly clearer, uh, so you may want to take a look at that. But basically, uh, data is huge, right? So who are the players? The Facebook, the LinkedIn, the Amazon, you name it, those people are collecting, analyzing uh, your behavior when you access their system. Um, what, they are, what, what are they doing really is... Um, a uh, recommendation engine, for example, when you go to Amazon, the moment you hit the website, you get books that are being presented to you that the chances or the likelihood of you buying is very high because they already know your profile from your past behavior. Uh, you look at uh, fraud detection, for example. All the credit card companies, all the banks today are implementing uh, fraud systems. If they are not, they should be, right, to detect whether there are fraudulent transactions happening. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, network monitoring for, for, for cyber security, that's very big today. Uh, marketing campaign analysis is a very, very common use case. So like, like uh, we were just chatting earlier, um, we have a customer where they take loyalty data combined with uh, commercially publicly available data that they can buy from data providers. So there are companies that collect information about you, anonymized, and they sell it to data uh, uh, marketing companies. So they'll collect all this information and uh, this customer of ours basically um, collect like three, four hundred gigs of data every day, process it, analyze it, and then they tell their customer, which could be let's say CK, uh, CK Tanks or, or Metro or whatever, for this, for your, this segment, for this Miss Tan, don't send catalog, send email, she responds to email. You send catalog, she never responds, don't waste your money. For Mr. Lim, Okay, send a catalog. He likes to cut out catalog and go to the store to redeem things. So people are really analyzing that kind, going down to individual level. Okay. <clears throat> so definition of big data. Uh, there are many uh, definition and and uh, but basically uh, the way we like to frame it is is uh, the three V's where we talk about volume, variety, and and velocity. <coughs> The idea for, for big data is it is so big that it cannot sit on a traditional system. For the SME, it will be one server, uh, two CPU, four CPU with your, with your attached uh, hard drives. 
it will be big when you can't scale anymore. Okay? Uh, for the bigger enterprises, yes, you could have a big 64 CPU uh, server, but the data site is growing so big that even you buy the biggest, most expensive SAN, it's still not going to meet your requirements. You could afford it, good, but you know it's getting very, very expensive. And uh, people today are, are uh, the data sets are going so big that conventional R RDBMS, the oracles, and you know, are not suitable to do your uh, analytics anymore. Okay, um, I mean, the, so Google stores all the world indexes, the, the traffic, who's looking at what, and all the pages. They don't use a re relational database. It, they can't. It doesn't work. Because in, if you look into their data center, they have a thousand of nodes. How do you run Oracle on a thousand nodes? No way. So they design their own uh, infrastructure to do that, right? Called, um, uh, externally, it's now known as Hadoop, right? To do that, to store that kind of, uh, of information. Uh, big data is, is also very messy. Uh, today, 70-90% uh, of all data generated is unstructured data. Okay, the sensor data, the, the text data, video, and, and so on. Uh, uh, structured data where people keen to CRM, ERP systems are getting um, not less, they are still increasing, but unstructured data is, is uh, increasing at a much, much uh, bigger, bigger uh, rate. Um, <coughs> This thing about uh, lacks predefined structure or difficult to map in the conventional, um, it actually applies very well into the medical domain. What happened is we have a, a partner in China. Uh, they were doing a project for, for one of the big hospitals. They couldn't use Oracle for a very simple reason. They have 100 years of data. And over the last 100 years, the way the, the data schema has evolved. 100 years ago, people only captured name, which village you are from, uh, what were you sick and what was medicine offered to you? Today, you get your blood type, you get your genome, you get a lot of things. So the data structure has actually changed. N maybe not every, uh, every year, but maybe every five years. As new technology came about, people needed to capture new information. So the traditional Oracle database, uh, which they had, was they had like lots of uh, silo systems that had to... Uh, that could not really talk to each other because the schema was all different. So what they did was they ran on Hadoop and consolidated everything on, on a, a Hadoop uh, a H base, which could, in a single database, could have schema that change over time. Okay, so that's very interesting. <coughs> uh, another characteristic of big data is, is that it moves, and it moves very, very fast. Uh, so you're looking at transactions. You 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 know if you um, every time I, I, I go to petro kiosk, I, I pay with with my Citibank. I will get an SMS from Citibank to say you know uh, well, why don't you buy a car insurance? So th these are some of the things that's happening, right? Um, uh, uh, Twitter, for example, although the, the the it's 140 characters, but uh, you have millions of people tweeting, and you want to analyze what people are talking about your brand you need to capture that information. So it's, data is moving very fast. So that, that's really a very brief uh, 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 five, ten minutes overview of what big data is. Um, as, as part of our COE outreach effort, we, we do conduct half day or one day workshop. In fact, uh, last two days, uh, we have been conducting a two day workshop where first day was really one whole day, nothing about what this slide is, 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 is uh, maybe you have another uh, 10, 20 times amount of data uh, information, right? talking about big data. And uh, today was actually a hands-on uh, analytics training, right? all free, right? as part of our outreach program. So if you're interested on this, let, let me know. We, we can keep you in our database and inform you on the next, next run. So what, what about this, this thing, uh, uh, analytics, and who are the players in, in this space? Um, <coughs> So at the bottom layer, like I mentioned, right, it, it's all about data, and uh, today people are storing it very much in, in, in Hadoop. Uh, if you don't already know what Hadoop is, it, it's basically a data storage framework and processing framework. The key word here is processing. Storage you can store on a database, you can store on the NAS, but Hadoop brings with it a data processing mechanism that allows you to process petabytes of data okay, uh, efficiently. 
uh, of course, you have the uh, tr more traditional databases or the MPP databases like uh, Greenplum, uh, Vertica. And the interesting thing is all these so-called proprietary database um, actually came from open source. Okay, so they leverage open source to develop their products. The next layer up is the analytics. So you have your data settled. Now, how do you then make sense of the data uh, in, in, your, in your database or data warehouse? So you have your analytics layer. So who are the players in this space? Uh, you have the legacy folks like SAS and SPSS. They have been around for 40 years. Their technology is 40 years old. Uh, they are good for small data sets. When your data sets grow big, uh, it's ridiculously slow. Okay? Uh, I don't think I have that slide, but I'll just share with you right, one, one of them. I, I won't put a name to it. Uh, we, we ran a benchmark, 123 million rows. Prop in Singapore, not many SME have 123 million rows of data. Um, uh, even you look at our population, like right, four or five million. Even you have multiple insurance uh, 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 policies with insurance. They will probably have at most right, several hundred thousand or uh, uh, one or two million. But in this example, we had 123 million rows of data that we need to analyze. And uh, our, one of our, our uh, someone got one of these uh, 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 proprietary uh, older uh, 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 statistical uh, software. They, they ran it with uh, one variable. H, for example, uh, it ran 2,000 seconds. Okay. Now, for people who have used analytics before, you know that that is what you will expect. Okay. 100, 100, 123 million rows, one column to analyze just that one one variable, and then we increase to uh, seven, and then we increase to 700 variables. You'll be you'll be surprised, right? Insurance companies actually keep hundreds of uh, columns of information about you as an individual your age, where you stay, whether you smoke, what insurance policies you have, da, 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 all this. So uh, uh, in, in this case, uh, it took uh, more than nine hours. After nine hours, it still did not complete right? with, with uh, the legacy software. And um, we, we ran it uh, with uh, R. I'll share a little bit more with R later. 5.1 seconds. Okay, nine hours versus 5.1 seconds. Okay, 123 million rows, 700 variables. Those of you who are in, in, in doing stats, and you have used R before, you know that hey, R actually can't do that, but our commercial version can do that. Okay, we can even process a billion rows in, in, in less than a minute. So so this is this is is the analytics layer. Uh, very popular today. What is the most popular data mining tool today? It is R. Okay. Uh, 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 Python is also very popular. Julia is another up and coming one. Okay. And the reason why all these are very popular, one is open source, readily available. You do not need to be a big enterprise to spend millions of dollars to get access to these tools to start working on your data. Right. A lot of our, uh, even my data scientists, he came from one of the health uh, uh, organization, right? They didn't have the money to go and buy an expensive SAS, for example, that costs millions of dollars. No choice, right? He needs to analyze the data, right? Boss said, please analyze, tell me. The so he looked around, he found R. He used R. He's now an expert in that, in that, in that area. <coughs> so where we, we have a lot of uh, 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 customers today, really, is or partners is uh, doing services on top of all this uh, very established uh, software. So this is Hadoop. Uh, um, I won't talk too much about it, but this is a architecture to build uh, 1,280 nodes cluster. Okay, uh, uh, 20 nodes per cabinet, and I think there are like uh, several several tens of, of cabinets. So this is a type of big data that our customers are building. It's not one server. It's racks and racks of servers, right? So if you are thinking of storing a lot of data, uh, look at Hadoop. But whether Hadoop is the right framework for you to do your processing is a separate matter. It may not be, but it's still a good way to store and, and, and do some very basic uh, processing of data. So this is just a, a snapshot to show how the Hadoop layer is, 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 is layered. Uh, you know, if you are interested, we can talk about it uh, uh, later. It gets quite technical. 
I'll show you a very brief video uh, about what, what is this analytics tool called, called R. What's behind the statistics, the analytics, and the visualizations that today's brightest data scientists and business leaders rely on to make powerful decisions? You may not always see it. It's called R, open source R, the statistical programming language that data experts the world over use for everything from mapping broad social and marketing trends online to developing the financial and climate models that help drive our economies and communities. But what exactly is R? And where did R start? Well, originally, R started here with two professors who wanted a better statistical platform for their students. So they created one modeled after the statistical language S. They, along with many others, kept working on and using R, creating new tools for R, and finding new applications for R every day. Thanks to this worldwide community effort, R kept growing, with thousands of user-created libraries built to enhance R functionality and crowdsourced quality validation and support from the most recognized industry leaders in every field that uses R, which is great because R is the best at what it does, letting experts quickly and easily interpret, interact with, and visualize data. Join the rapidly growing community of R users worldwide and see how open source R continues to shape the future of statistical analysis and data science. So R is a statistical programming language. If you want to work with data, this is the best tool for the job today, okay? Um, it's the number one uh, tool, uh, way exceeding the, the traditional players. The second most popular is Python. Excel is number three. Okay? And if you really want to understand data, R is the, the only way that will help you understand your data. Uh, uh, there are GUIs, drag and drop, to help you build your workflow. Uh, but the best way and the feedback that we have got is you code in R. It's very simple and you actually can understand your data better. <coughs> so this is a very typical, especially from an enterprise point of view, a very typical way uh, how big data is being uh, uh, organized and, 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 and um, uh, uh, used. So you have all your data source. This is the layer where I call ingestion. This is where, where data is being ingested. It can come from various data sources. Uh, it can come from, from your Oracle data warehouse, your Terra data, and so on. And a lot of these get pulled into Hadoop today. So some people put Hadoop right in front, where all new data comes in first into Hadoop before it gets into the data warehouse. Some people put Hadoop further back in, where they, they pull existing uh, data warehouse information into Hadoop also to mash up with new data. And within that, oh, sorry. Uh, within that, that's where they, they then do all the analytics uh, in, in R, in the Hadoop cluster. And once that's done, uh, it can be visualized through any of your existing BI tools. Okay? <coughs> uh, this is also, uh, this is not done by us. This is actually done by uh, one of our uh, uh, potential customers who actually became our customer. Uh, insurance, uh, this is all state insurance in the US, 150 million observations, means 150 million rows, 70 degrees of freedom, that means 70 columns that, or variables that they want to analyze. Uh, they tried it on a 16 core Sun server, it took 5 hours. They tried it with RevoScale R uh, on a 5 node cluster, it took 5.7 minutes. So it's really 5 hours versus 5.7 on, on open source R, it, it, didn't, it didn't complete after uh, 3 days. The, the key thing here is this. It is difficult to be productive on a tight schedule. It takes over five hours to fit one candidate model. Now, for those of you who come with uh, SQL background where you're you know, developing your SQL code or you're a programmer, this is an iteration. Building analytics models is also iteration. You drive your SQL code, you run. Then all of a sudden, if I, hey, it doesn't work, then you do, you know, trace where is the debug and, and, and Same. When you build a model, you are also going to be iterating. This model doesn't work or you need to change the parameters, you change. But if it takes five hours, how many models can you build a day, too? But with R in 5.7 minutes, I can make your data scientist work very hard. <laughs> He'll have no coffee breaks, okay? He will just be you know, iterating and building his model. He can test you know, hundreds of models a day. So this is the reason why everybody is switching to R, because of the increased productivity, not just because of cost. 
Um, the other thing really is the ability of R uh, to run uh, on multiple platforms, including the cloud, right, we will talk about later. So today you write a simple R script, you can now run in the cloud, you can run on your, on your server, uh, on your laptop for example, it can run onto a server and it makes use of all the calls on the server, it can run onto a cluster, it makes use of all the calls and all the nodes in the cluster, it can run in Hadoop, it can also run inside the database. The database that we support today is Teradata. Okay? It's the same R code, unchanged. So what it means to the developer now is that all of a sudden you have a single platform, a single tool that can support your organization's uh, multivariate platforms that you have. And we have engaged with customers who actually have all these different platforms. But every platform that they go to, they have to use different uh, uh, proprietary uh, uh, SQL or tools to access those. But now with R, they can use one single language to access all these platforms. So why, why is, is people you know, looking at, 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 at big data and, 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 and R uh, and analytics? Uh, it is really a convergence of, of uh, computing, as in the, the computing infrastructure and, and the, all of a sudden the, the massive amount of data, right? And that, there's really three things that has happened. Uh, data science, where we talk about uh, people being able to now build very sophisticated models. Uh, I mean, statistics has been around for hundreds of years, but the, the only recently have all of a sudden all this uh, enabled by data, of course, people were able to build a lot more uh, models, a lot more sophisticated models. Uh, if you look a few years back, it, it really got kick-started in a way uh, with Netflix. Netflix had a competition to say, who can build me the best models to recommend the video that my users wants to watch, right? I'll, uh, the winner will get $1 million. So that all of a sudden created a huge influx of people who, were, who wanted to win that $1 million. Uh, and I started this whole uh, 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 data science in a way, right? Uh, being, building very, very advanced, very... It brought out all the, all the statisticians who was hiding in all the various universities, faculties, right? All then came up to compete, right? And they were trying to uh, uh, pit their models against each other. Uh, the other thing that really drove big data uh, is, is, is uh, what well, I mean, computer science or, or, or Hadoop or, or IT or cluster. It's, it's about the ability of, of um, uh, the, the fact that today uh, commodity x86 servers all right, are available. Technology uh, are available. Open source technology, Linux are available to glue all this together to build a very complex uh, infrastructure and make it available at very low cost. We are talking really about cluster computing. Right? Without that, you don't have big data. But today, because you can stick uh, one server, 10 terabyte, you stick 100 of them together, you get one petabyte. You stick another 100, you get two petabyte of data. You couldn't do this 10 years ago. You can do it now. These are all teaching R today. You go and hire a, a, a fresh uh, stats uh, guy from, from the university. They come ready, right? Uh, come with batteries, right? They know R already. You don't need to train them in anything else. Um, not only in Singapore, but all over the world. And uh, surprisingly, uh, I've met a number of data scientists here. Uh, a lot of them uh, are actually from the Philippines. Because not as, as, as a country that's not too rich, the, the university don't buy all the expensive software. But they are teaching stats, so they, they got the students to use R. Whereas for us here, it was a little bit slower. But beginning, a lot of them are now using R to, uh, for their statistics training. Uh, infrastructure. So really, uh, it's a disruptive technology in, in the sense of uh, commodity x86 hardware. I mean, yeah, yeah, you still have your Spark and uh, your power from IBM and so on. But you look into Google, you look into Facebook. Not only do they know, you don't even want Dell or HP, right? They go direct to Quanta and say, I want a motherboard with CPU and hard drive. That's it. Don't give me anything else, right? They're going to that kind of commodity level. Uh, open source is, has a big, big influence. Without Linux, Hadoop, and R, uh, without the whole open source community, this, this Hadoop and R would not have happened, right? So to understand, uh, you need to look a little bit into the history of that. <coughs> so uh, this is a very interesting chart in the sense it actually tells you why cloud. Uh, the author actually says it's, it's called the ex uh, attack of the exponentials in the sense that um, 
One terabyte of, of storage cost $14 million in 1980. Today, so you, you can't really see this very clearly, but uh, I, I got this data in, in 26th of August. You could buy actually a one terabyte of, of uh, Western D hard drives for $110. Okay? <coughs> Network. When it first started, there was one node connected to the internet. Today, you have nearly a billion, right, and, and growing. CPU, when you wanted uh, one gigaflop of, of uh, computing power back in the 1960s, it would have cost you nearly a billion dollars from IBM. Today, you can buy an Intel uh, Core i7, 99 gigaflops, for $473, which works out to be about less than $5 per gigaflop. Right, it's all these, these advances in, in, in compute uh, uh, technology, right, give you the, the huge amount of compute power, right, that allows all this big data uh, and clock computing to hap happen, right. So, in particular, this bandwidth, uh, 1998, it was like $1,200 per uh, Mbps. Uh, this was a promo that I, I cut and paste in August from Starhub. Uh, $118, uh, you get uh, 12 Macs, you get uh, free handphone and so on. It works out like $9 per Mbps, right? So it is really about the, the, the huge and, and you know, fast drop of, of storage, CPU, uh, the bandwidth. All these costs have come down, and that's why today it's possible to do big data. It's not that you, you, people were not thinking of doing it 5 or 10 years ago. It was just too expensive. But today, with all this, it, it is possible. I mean, today, you are taking pictures, videos of your kids. I'm sure you, you, you have a, a 500 gig hard drive sitting at home on a NAS or something, and probably that is not sufficient anymore. You need a, a, a 3 or 4 terabyte because your, your, your camera, right? Five, eight years ago was uh, two, mega, uh, 2 megapixel. Today, it's 20 megapixel. One file is, is, is huge. So that, that's growing. <coughs> so the, the third, third thing about, about this uh, big data and, and all, it is about this, this new sex symbol called the data, Mr. Data Scientist or Miss Data Scientist, right? Uh, and people always ask, so what, what constitutes a data scientist? Um, this is a very interesting definition I found, right? Uh, he is part statistician. 20% 20, 20 of the time he, he does his statistics. But what's also very important is the other 20% of the time, he has to communicate with the users and IT to tell them what they need, and he needs to ask them, what is it that you want to solve? What is it that you want me to solve? So he needs to be a very good communicator. The other 60% is he, he needs to know magic. You need to think out of the box. You need to be very creative in analyzing data. It's very different from a traditional statistician. So we have worked with organizations that, that had traditional statistician, right? And they were just looking at generating reports based on this. But today, you know, and a lot of these things get, get, you know, they, they just work in very silo in, in within the organization, but that's the style for the last, you know, uh, a decade. But today, data scientists, they are out there looking all around and thinking, can I make my model better if I integrate data from Facebook? Can I make my bot model be better if I start collecting all these sensors they send it? So they are now thinking, of where can I get data? No longer are they sitting there and waiting for IT to say, this is the data, please analyze. Or this is a report, do you, are all these are data, are you analyze? No. They are now out there asking, what other data do I or can I have access to, right, to make my model better, to make my organization have better insights. So he really needs to think out of the box. <coughs> so in building, in building such a team, uh, three things that you need to look at is really you need uh, the IT, IT folks, right, they are very important. They allow you to work with all the uh, big infrastructure. You need the uh, uh, data scientists. You need the, the guys who know the maths and the stats. I have a lot of partners who say, oh, I have Java programmers. I said, no, sorry. Please go to university, hire a, a PhD or, ma or, or master's in stats. Then you can't talk to me about being a partner. But with just Java programming, or, or you cannot do data science. It's not possible. Okay? Uh, and then you, you have your, your domain uh, expertise that, that you need to have uh, to, to understand what the problem is. Okay, so that, that's what we call um, 
being able to build very effective uh, data science application. So a lot of organizations don't have this piece. Okay? Some organizations, the bigger government agencies have research units. Right? <clears throat> but even then I was very surprised, right? Even with research unit, they were not able to stack, you know, we conducted a, a class of one of them a couple of weeks back. They came to us and at, at, towards the end of class they had this problem about some, you know, geocoding stuff and so on. They couldn't solve it for months, you know, and this is a team of, of statisticians, you know. My guy was looking at it, can what? 20 minutes, we solved the problem for them. That's the power of innovation, that's the power of R. R is so flexible, they can do this sort of things, okay? <coughs> so you need to think out of the box, you know, to be creative. So it, it's, it's an art. <coughs> so moving, moving into the cloud, right, really, <coughs> what, what is the cloud? To me, the only true cloud out there, unfortunately, is Amazon. Maybe Azure. The rest of the players are hosting. It has not changed. They will tell you, I sell you a, a, a cloud server. But there's no such thing as called a cloud server. A server is a server. It's not a cloud server. Okay? So, what is, is a cloud to me? It has to have a few things. It has to have lots of APIs. It needs to provide a platform that allows ISVs like us to build on top. <coughs> I do want to buy VMs. VMs alone, a lot of providers out there say, oh, I, I sell you cloud. Uh, but all I can get is buying VMs. There's no value. I want a plat sorry. I, I want, I want <coughs> database on demand. I want Hadoop on demand. But this but I don't want to manage a database anymore. There's no value. There is, but it's very low. I want to focus on my application. I want the cloud provider to give me database on demand. So if you look at Amazon, Amazon today has a warehouse on demand called Redshift. That is a value to ISVs, to customers. You go to most of the other cloud vendors, they tell you, yeah, I sell you a cloud server. Oh, but you have to install your own database. What's the point? <coughs> Uh, you're looking at, at uh, uh, software as a service, you're looking at per hour pricing infrastructure in less than 10 minutes upon sign up. I mean, I still come across cloud providers that say, yeah, I provide cloud, send me an application form, three days later I tell you that your service is up and running. Hello, this is not cloud, okay? Cloud means within five to 10 minutes, I must get access, right? Else it's not on demand. That's why it's mainly on demand, right? When I want it, I get it, not three days later, okay? <clears throat> so it's really about uh, being very cost effective and enabling innovations and focusing on your core uh, intellectual property. Now, cloud doesn't mean it's cheap. A lot of people have misconception, oh, cloud means it's cheap. Yeah, per hour, one dollar, uh, but you have to think, uh, if your application is running 24 uh, hours a day, it's $24 per day. Once you work out on a month, it's a few hundred dollars. And then when you go out to a year, it becomes a lot. If you know you're going to run an application 365 days uh, a year, go to a hosting provider and say, please, I want to log into a contract for one year or two years. It's cheaper. But the hosting provider business model is very standard. My cost is $100. I'll charge you $150. I make $50. That's it. You are in with me for one year. In the cloud model, it's different. You go to Amazon. Amazon don't know that you'll be with him for one year you can disappear the next hour. So as, it's like insurance, right? He will have to charge you a premium for that one hour that you are with him. So that's why Amazon later on introduced things like reserve instances and so on. We say that, okay, you pay less on a per hour usage, but you put a, a, a fee with me, right? You pay up front a little bit, and then every hour you get it slightly cheaper. <clears throat> so cloud is really a financial model, okay? Even from the business side of things. It's not about uh, technology as such. <coughs> so, why is this big data analytics? Plan? What is required uh, uh, if you want you want to do analytics as a service? You will want the, so this can also apply to to internal organizations. You want uh, a framework or a platform that can provide you uh, servers with with lots of memory because a lot of analytics software requires lots of memory to run. Uh, you want a platform that can, in an instance, provide to you a cluster, right? Traditional uh, software like SAS, SPSS uh, doesn't run in cluster, but R can run in the cluster. 
So that's how instead of spending five hours, you can get your, your task done in 5.7 minutes. Uh, it could be high performance computing clusters, it could be Hadoop clusters. <coughs> uh, you want the ability to provision uh, databases on demand, large, big databases. Uh, there's a reason why it's drawn this way. This is column store, where databases is stored in columns rather than traditional RDBMS by, by rows. Right? Column store is very efficient for analytics. Right? So this is what we, I would, my vision of analytics uh, platform as a service. <coughs> it also has the ability to pull in public data sets, right? Uh, and the cloud R that I mentioned, it already has all this, right? We have public data sets available. Uh, for the service to be useful, a lot of customers today are analyzing social media data. So there should be a way for social media uh, feeds to come into this platform also. And there are already providers that, that, that does this, like GNAME and so on, that you can subscribe to to get curated data. I would recommend that if you are looking at monitoring social media and you want to access those data, please don't try to scrap Twitter or Facebook or any of those forum sites on your own. Right? It's not worth your time and your money buy those data from providers. Locally here, you can talk to Brentology, for example. For a very simple reason, these people have been doing it for so long, they know all the tricks. So we have come across some, some companies, right? They say, oh, I want uh, this data to be monitored every five minutes, this forum to be monitored every five minutes. Eyeball, maybe you can, but you want a robot to go and monitor every five minutes, not possible. Why? The forum owner will know this is a robot coming in and he's scrapping data from me, I will block you. Your IP will be banned. That's it, you're dead. Right? So these are people who, after a while, will know. You want to monitor, you want to send a robot, they will know, oh, this site, I must send uh, the robot to go and scrap new data every two hours, 45 minutes. This site, I can do it every hour. Anything less than that, I'll be blocked. So these are some interesting things that, when you're looking at social media data, you need to be aware of. Right? Not every site allow you to go in and, and, and grab the data. <coughs> uh, of course, we need to be paid, so there must be a way to meter and, and, and so on. Of course, if you are a private cloud, you may not want, but even if you are pri running a private cloud, uh, uh, we have organizations that are now uh, turning IT into a, a, a IT as a service, right? They want to charge the users, so you want to be able to build the customers who are using your infrastructure. No long, I mean, these are a little bit more advanced. And the banks are doing it, but a lot of our, of our IT organizations are not. Uh, because they are still based on a capex, or I want this project, I, I go and, and get this amount of budget to, to do this particular project. But today, some of the banks, what they do is they set up uh, a, a compute backbone, where projects will come in and you know, the users will, will pay on, on, on a, a usage basis. Uh, so within uh, our platform, uh, the, the goal is really to have uh, uh, standard models that have already been built by data scientists or our partners, put it on, on that you can easily consume and use as an end user. And uh, also some form of collaboration or real-time data sharing with other parties. So we, we, we are getting in a situation where we have SME you say, come to us and say, oh, I have all this data, can you help me analyze? Of course we, we can, but we also say, well, uh, Mr. SME, why don't you work with my partner, ABC, that have the skill sets? So we provide you the platform to do this sharing. Okay, so think of it, this is exactly like your, um, I got this idea, I mean, this is not new. I learned of this, or got, I got inspired by all the online accounting uh, software vendors. Right, SME have accounting, but they, a lot of them cannot uh, employ an accountant full time. So they upload, they use Quicken online, whatever, and then they get an accountant to come in and check their books and, and so on. Right? Same concept. Right? You outsource their expertise. <coughs> so, this is very interesting, right? One billion rows, again, one billion is huge in the analytics world, right? For the longest time, no, not many people can do it. To do this, back in 2011, uh, in 80 seconds, it required 32 servers. 384 cores, uh, 1.5 terabyte of RAM. The hardware alone was $2.5 million to do this. Okay? We did it with five servers. Right? 
our our software was just a lot more efficient than than SAS. This is SAS. Okay, we did it in, in, in uh, with five servers, 44 seconds. Now, when we did it on a cloud, because of the you know uh, 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 virtualization overhead and all, it, it, it's slightly slower, but 95 seconds. But you know, not too far from 80. Not as good as 44, but not too far from 80, right? And we use uh, eight eight nodes, eight servers. But what's interesting is this: to do this, you needed 2.5 million dollars of hardware. This was twenty thousand dollars worth of hardware. On the cloud, twenty six dollars. Why twenty six? It's actually cheaper than twenty six, but Amazon charged me on a one hour basis. I spin up the eight eight servers. I was done in ninety five seconds, less than five minutes. I shut down my cluster, I still get charged for the whole hour. Right? Because that's the, the you know they don't not like Singtel, right? Bill you by per, per second, right? They bill by per hour. So it's twenty six dollars just to do this demo or this benchmark. This to me is the reason why people will move to the cloud. Lots of your data you're collecting, you're not necessarily analyzing it, you're just collecting so you don't need a lot of machines to collect. But the moment you want, you can spin up a very large cluster, do your analysis very quickly, shut it down. As long as it's within that hour, the cost is very, very affordable. $26, 2.5 million. Go figure. Right? Lawrence, I'm just wondering why is it by your can't you have more nodes or more calls? Can you call to get it done faster? Yeah, yeah, of course, we, we could. Yeah, uh, the reason why it's spin up 8 is uh, my engineer decided to spin up 8 only, so. <laughs> We could get it down lower. I mean, by adding more more nodes, it will definitely drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the other thing to think about is 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 the time to imp for implementation. Two point five million dollars. Big government hospital, right? Who needs to be who needs to approve? CEO, right? How many months the cycle to get this uh, this project approved? When it comes down to, to, to $20,000, probably a few weeks, your manager can approve it. This one, uh, 10 minutes, uh, you don't need a manager, you go, you credit card, do a reimbursement claim, end of the month. All of a sudden, the whole analytic cycle, right, becomes short. This is cost, it's something that you can just swipe a credit card and get it done. You do not need to wait six months, nine months to implement a million dollar, two million dollar infrastructure or project to get all this done today. But if your data is sensitive, yes, you can't put it on the cloud. So you may not enjoy this, but at least, right, with newer technology, you're able to do it at a fraction of cost. So Cloud Arm, we are very proud of it. This is built in Singapore, right? For people who are interested to test run it, uh, let me know. We are not collecting, uh, you have to use your own Amazon account, so Amazon will charge you. We are not collecting uh, uh, our software license fee at the moment. Okay, we'll start that next year. So this period is really um, for, for, for people to come in and use. Questions?